We're live. Hooray, we did it. Did it. Proud of you. Uh oh. Proud of you, boy. Proud of you. <laughs> you did it. Good job, son. Welcome back, John. Welcome back. Uh hooray, <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> Great. I did it. I got Concrud. I had a year straight of no full blown Concrud, and then it got me this year. It did got you me at right least here. get like no plane troubles. Uh, my suitcase got damaged like severely. Oh, okay. So now, now I need to replace that. I, I got it back in April. Oh, wow. Bummer. Yeah. This is obviously the one you checked. Yeah, I checked two suitcases, one for throwing controllers, one for my own gear. My own gear is the one that got damaged. Which one would you have preferred to be damaged? Probably that one, actually. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's a silver lining then. There has to be, like, a replacement policy for a company that makes luggage that gets destroyed after four months, right? <clears throat> Probably, but I don't think I have any of the documents they need anymore. That's, <laughs> oh. where, they, that's where they get you. Like, yeah. Because I'm like, oh, luggage, it'll last longer than a year. Sure. <laughs> You might just right. be able to like eat, message their customer service and just be on like, Twitter. look, this happened. Yeah. And, well, I just meant probably on their website, like <clears throat> contact us. They might just like go along with it. I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Maybe it's um, it's Air Canada brand luggage. So I don't know. You should try because to get a sponsorship luggage. with luggage. Some luggage company. You travel enough that it would be so worth it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if, they, if they're even willing to sponsor someone like me for something like that. But you're right. I should just do that. Because I would be, for one thing, hilarious. That's a great sponsor nobody ever thinks of. <laughs> yeah. Well, fuck, now I need to look this up, because now I want to know if I can. Because, like, you, you, you go, you, you travel so much that, like, yeah, maybe maybe that's why they won't, because it's like, he travels too much, our stuff's going to get damaged quickly. And yeah. we don't want to no, show how bad. Nothing will survive the proton John effect. Is that is that yeah. the statement they're making? They, every time that there's a con, they just look at your Twitter and they're like, "Oh God, he loses everything when he travels. <laughs> <laughs> we can't give him anything. We'll go broke." He just has a travel aura. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everything just gets sucked in the black hole as soon as he's on that plane. So you were at PAX. Apparently, yep. John is gone. So. This is now our leave, show. Leave, which leave is, or just get disconnected? Oh, he's, have, yeah, he's gone. gone. Yeah, wow. He completely just Damn. eased out. So this is now our <laughs> show where we're going to talk about everything but video games. All right. Uh, <laughs> so I have been drinking orange juice lately since I have been sick. So how do you feel about orange juice? Oh, dude, orange juice. Let me tell you, you need pulp as far as I'm concerned. Oh, man, really? I love pulp. All right. Are you a full pulp or like just a little? Uh... I think there's a point where if you have full pulp, it's gross because it's like, I don't know, that texture can be way too much. So a little bit, mm -hmm. I think. I think a little bit. I'm a no pulp guy, but like even no pulp at the end of the day still has pulp in it. So you just kind of get used <laughs> to it. Kind of true. Like, like yeah. look at this. Look at this glass of orange juice I have right here. Does this look like it does not have pulp in it? Uh, I mean, just I just saw like something move. So it definitely has pulp. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about drinking my orange juice now, Paul. Thanks. I just saw an eye pop out. <laughs> so, what I'm saying is drink up. <laughs> God damn. All right. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Sorry, I had a phone call I had to take. No, totally. That's, That's fine. <laughs> I almost hear... spit out my orange juice. What, what are we on now? Are we on news? You'll hear it in, uh... <laughs> You'll hear it in post. post. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Can't wait. No, we're yeah. talking about PAX West, and we were talking about uh, luggage sponsorships. Okay. Yes. Right. Have we talked about the actual event yet? No. <laughs> no, we're getting, we're getting there. Okay. Yeah. And then eventually we'll talk about video games. I mean, maybe. <laughs> the yeah, way this maybe. is going, I don't know. If, if we're lucky. Um, but yeah, no, talk about, talk about the actual show. How was Seattle? Actually, before the show, did you eat anything awesome in Seattle? No. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not adventurous for eating. I don't know why you asked. It's true. I, okay. Well, I didn't know that, or I didn't internalize that. I guess I yeah. should have. What did you eat? Uh, food. It was delicious. Like, did you, did you just we, go to like McDonald's? We went to like Cheesecake Factory a fair amount, actually. Okay. Okay. 
I mean, you so, can, they have those in Calgary. No, they don't. Do they not? They had no, they're, one. No, they're American. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's Cheesecake Cafe in Canada. And it's that's not the same company. It's a different company. Oh, you're right, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I th Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah. Anyways, there's one by Sunridge, and I, it's had the word cheesecake in it, so I don't know. Yeah, I went to one in Calgary and got food poisoning, so I never went back. <laughs> okay. Okay. I can see that. But yeah, no, uh, PAX was good. Uh, we were worried about the smoke because the the fires and all the smoke that had come up to Calgary. Right. Apparently it was bad in Seattle, but like it was actually fine while we were there. That's good. Cool. <laughs> but you had said like Calgary had already like cleared up a bunch too anyway. Yeah, I apologize. I'm going to keep ducking out a little bit because I, like I said, I have concrete. So, yeah, right. sure, no problem. Um, yeah, I wish I had gone. Uh, I tried, but like we talked about last week, the tickets just... This year it went so yeah. fast. Yeah, I do wish I had went this year. Yeah, not only did they go so fast, they're so expensive now. Yeah, it, well, isn't it like 200? 50 bucks a day? Yeah, 200 bucks for the whole con the whole weekend. Yeah. I also hear a lot of developers are like, I really wish this wasn't four days long. Oh, well, because yeah. they have to pay per day to be there. So, yeah. Yeah. And it would just get tiring. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're on the clock. They're not necessarily enjoying it. <laughs> So. Yeah, most most devs I chatted with are like, I'm so ready to go home. <laughs> yeah. There's only so many hours a day you can have a, a stranger come up to you and scream, What's <laughs> can I what can I have for free from this booth into your face? Yeah. Or repeat the same question answer over and over. To be fair, this is like that's their job is being is like they these are probably PR people. Actually, yeah, yeah. now I think about packs. A lot of the times they're not. They're just the devs, and yeah, they'll probably the not be leaving a basement. For the indie area, yeah, for now, sure. Now here's the thing: like even the non indies had a lot of devs. Like the Devil May Cry Five dev was there. Suda Fifty One was there. Sure. Swery was probably at his event. I I know Swery was there. I was seeing him on Twitter. Yep. Yep. Mario himself. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. He's a big Pax fan. He, he was running the Smash booth. Yeah. He was that like, "You better pick me, and only me." <laughs> it's a me everyone yeah. <laughs> yeah everyone yeah no we hey, had well, our uh, i mean how'd the panels go i was gonna say uh we had our panel on the first day so okay. uh panel went good it wasn't streamed this year which was a little weird for us mm -hmm. but uh Did you guys like record it or anything we didn't have anyone to record it oh, so if a fan right, right. yeah if a fan did it's recorded otherwise it's lost to the ether Okay, so if you've recorded it, send it to John so we can upload it or something, I guess? Yeah, it'll it'll get uploaded. I might as well just... I'm going to do a quick search see if it actually showed up. But, yeah. uh... Yeah. But, uh... What if, what if someone... <laughs> what uh -huh. if someone filmed it, uh -huh. but they didn't, like, do a good job, so it was, like, just on you the entire time? <laughs> it's, like, an hour and a half straight, and it's too zoomed in. I mean, maybe that's their version of a good job. They only want to see John. Maybe. They're like, who are these other people up on stage? They are creating the content that they themselves want. That's yeah. the first rule. I don't know how um, I feel about this. <laughs> Why did you find that? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I kind of hope not. It would actually be creepier if there was video of, like very close up of John not at his panel but just walking around the convention that would be way worse very. like paparazzi style or something yeah waiting to catch him uh, in a... I bet you could have if you had like planned ahead you probably could have like gotten someone a fan or like a mod that you know who's going there to like yeah. you know man a camera yeah yeah the um the problem was like we were trying last minute to get a a better time slot or like in a different room that had streaming okay and uh the options were like later than the panel already was like the panel was at like uh, 7 30 to 8 30 i think mm -hmm. and the other options would have been like 10 30. wow okay no so we were like no there's kind of something nice about being part of something if you're in that audience knowing that like this is the experience of now that isn't saved for other people like i'm getting to just be here so there's something nice about oh like that. Y like y if you want to see it you should have been there kind of yeah yeah that, that is nice um and then the other side of it is like 
this is also John's living is these like p- panels and in, in his in his in his YouTube ch- channel. So he needs this content in another way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's kind of a double edged sword in that sense. I like the uh, the idea of being like, yeah, I can tell you what happened and you'll never get to see it. But like it, it was kind of funny who won and how. Uh, mm-hmm. But it depends on like whether or not the footage exists or not. Like, is it worth yeah. like telling you that's what happened? Otherwise, you're right. Yeah, it was like a it was an interesting thing. I was trying to think here now. Like our friends had panels too, and I I think theirs might have been streamed. I don't know. I don't know. Can I know someone in the chat might know this? Was Tyler and Josh's versus panel streamed, or was it also probably not because it was in the same hotel? Mm. So you're thinking just your panel was not streamed, like a vendetta against you? No, <laughs> nothing like that. Specifically. But I, I, <laughs> Someone just got really angry at not me even of some against, Mario Party stuff. Not even against the runaway guys, against John specifically. It's just John specifically. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that guy in particular. Mike and Jerry, not big fans of the, <laughs> of the Proton John. Yeah, they're not known for liking sarcasm at all, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, well, um, so that panel went well, you said. How about the other ones? Um... That was the only panel we were on. So we had a. I a you meet- had a bunch of panels. Yeah, I was on a bunch of things, but I only had one panel. I had a signing at the Twitch booth, uh, which was just me and Reese, which was a little odd. Because usually, that when, odd? well, because usually when Twitch does a signing, they're like, "All right, um, we're going to give you like three other people that are either tangentially related to you, your or friends, they just kind of look like you." No, <laughs> like they do the same content. <laughs> Jesus, Sean, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh could you imagine like we found these three other streamers yeah that share a striking resemblance and we thought that would be a funny like theme to go with <laughs> it would be pretty good that would be actually pretty funny i i wonder if twitch would probably do something that stupid if they could pull it off <laughs> But no, um, usually it's like oh here's like a bunch of streamers that do like similar content to you where you can request like someone get paired up in your group if they're also like a partnered streamer that's big enough okay but uh it was just me and reese which was a little weird because like i said every other time i've done a signing with twitch it's been four people there i just want to read this one comment from the chat this is from counterpoint clover can one of these proton johns please sign my throne controllers card thanks a <laughs> bunch <laughs> one of them <laughs> only one though can't have too many yeah um, so it was just you and Reese, though? There wasn't four? No, which like it was weird, because apparently we weren't the only group that had that happen, but every other year I've gone, and every other PAX and con, it's been, like, four people no matter what. So I'm wondering, like, did they just not have enough people interested in doing a signing this year? Were they just trying something different, or what? Some no-shows, maybe, as well? Maybe. Move people around differently? Yeah, I can't imagine they wouldn't have enough, like, because I bet every second person at PAX probably has their own, like, YouTube channel at this point, and they would be more than happy to sign something for you. Um, mm-hmm. but, I don't know. But, yeah, I don't uh, know. like, I also missed it on the Twitch party because it was during the panel. What was the Twitch stuff. party? Um, they went to the Museum of Pop Culture. Okay. I hear that's very cool. Yeah, and that was just where it was this year. Cool. But it was during the panel, so I had to miss it. Bummer. Yeah. Uh, okay, and uh, what else did you do? Um, played a lot of video games, which okay. we should probably talk well, yeah. about on the well, top numbers. That. Yeah, take, hey, take it away. Keep going. I'm John Wheeler. Oh, I'm Paul Fleck. <laughs> I'm all flustered. I was also one of the John Wheelers at PAX. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they made me sign something. I have to say that. <laughs> God damn it. Please like and subscribe. You're right. We should have stuck to that bit. I should have said I'm John Wheeler right after him as well. <laughs> that would have been good. Uh, I'm Sean Booker. Uh, yeah, September 7th. Guys, games are coming out like every week now. Yeah, Dude. It's crazy. Yeah. We got yeah. Spider Man this week. Next week, we got Tomb Raider. Um, oh my God. Falling. Gardens Between, that Nintendo indie game I was looking that they announced recently is the following week. Games are coming out. Yeah. Uh, but yes, John, you already talked about it. Uh, what have you been playing at PAX? A lot of stuff. Um, I got a fair amount of demos in this year because there was actually stuff I was interested in. 
First and foremost, I will state I did not get in line for Smash Brothers because uh, that line was fucking garbage. No, don't say that. Everyone stopped watching the YouTube oh, archive. No! Oh, damn it. <laughs> Should have been like, I'm going to talk about Smash at the very end after all the ads. After all of the ads, all the mid-roll ads. Uh, all the mid-roll ads. So Nintendo's booth was set up so that there were two lines. There was a line for Smash Brothers and Mario Party at the same time. And then a line and, for packs. And then a line for everything else. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's smart. That's probably smart. Yeah. So, uh, never played Smash, never played Mario Party. But I did get to play No More Heroes, Travis Strikes Back. Okay. And I actually got to meet Suda51. Whoa, did you get him to sign something? No, I didn't have anything to sign, but like, I was picture? just... Really yes, I do have pictures of me oh, cool. with him. Okay. Very so, my buddy Tom was a... Uh, had. Uh, Oh, what was the pass? It's not the it's like a content producer badge for like streamers and YouTubers. Uh -huh. And he got offered. Have? I have a panelist badge. Oh, OK. Or special guests, as they call it. Uh, Which so. Better? I'd argue his technically. Why is that? Because he gets to set up meetings and stuff like that. The best that we get is we get to like ignore panel lines, basically. Oh, OK. Uh, OK. <clears throat> And by ignore panel lines, I mean act like you work on the panel and then just take a seat. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, that game was fun, and it was really fun to chat with Suda. He he is a very excitable dude. It was kind of awesome. Yeah. What What did you talk about? Tell us some of the. So I I, I mainly asked him questions about the game because it was an interview. Mm -hmm. So I asked him some stuff about Travis Strikes again. Like this is not considered No More Heroes three, correct? He said, Yeah. Is going to be any cameos from No More Heroes characters like Henry or Shinobu? And he was like, I can't tell you. Which means <laughs> Did you ask if you could turn into a tiger still? Oh, no, that's already been in the trailer. So Okay. Actually, now that I think about it, I, that's true. Uh, I'm trying to remember what else we asked him. Basically, just asked him, like, uh, the, what he thought about, like, doing something different. Like, did he, is he excited to work on more stuff like that? And he was just, he was just really fun to chat with. Then we sat down he and actually played. this was an game. interview. Did, did you have to, like, approach this? Like you had to say, I'm going to interview you or. Was so, just... so here's the thing, like uh, my buddy Tom set up the slot. He was offered like an interview and time to play the game. Oh, OK. But he, but he just wanted to play the game. And then it ended up like, yeah, did you want to interview Suda? I'm like, and he was just like, chat with uh, him, sure. fine. <laughs> OK. <laughs> no, it was it, like, like I said, it was a it was a pleasant surprise, probably the high point of the of the weekend. Yeah, for sure. Did you guys ask him anything like outside of the game like i don't know what's your favorite movie or something uh no i should have done something like that you're right yeah. i was i was admittedly a little starstruck so because like, sure. I, really, I really love suda's like work in general so yeah yeah i would love to know like his five favorite movies just going off of his work and stuff i think mm -hmm. that would be really cool i would expect the answers he'd come back with might not <laughs> would probably be like japanese exclusive movies at least some of them oh for also, sure I, but I, also i, I think bet there's some weird stuff in there is he the one who's like really into drive or was that Kojima? Kojima. Okay. I think Kojima has the jacket. Yeah. Actually, uh, that's... maybe I, I might be mistaken, actually. No, I, I think you're right. I know one of the two has the jacket and I couldn't remember. Yeah. Kojima, another one I'd be like, I would love to know your five favorite movies. I think he puts that out on Twitter every now and then, anyways. So, yeah, he definitely tweets about movies and stuff too. Just, and I'm sure Sue has been Nicholson asked that all the time before. So, you could find that too. Yeah. Um, so we play the game as well. Uh, it is, how do I describe it? Do you ever play Marvel Ultimate Alliance? Yeah, love it. Yeah, it's pretty much that, but like okay. no more hero, no more heroes themed. I'm into this. I'm into this idea. Also, Sean, Sean is muted. muted. But yeah, no, I'm super into this idea because I don't actually like no more heroes one or two very much. So this sounds great. I like the style. I just don't like the gameplay. Yeah, so it's a top-down hack and slash, cool. you know, like dungeon crawler kind of game. I'm you assuming have, the co-op element is not there. Uh, yeah, there's you, there's two player, but like, but no, Marvel no swap line... between characters on the fly. No, nothing yeah, like that. You have like four guys, right. like really close to each other. Yeah, but the gameplay is similar to that. Like you, cool. you hold down a trigger button to get access to your special <laughs> abilities. You have supers that you can activate together to do more damage, stuff like that. Cool. cool. It's one All step right. away like, from a MOBA. I like it. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was fun to play. Uh, it had ranking per stage. The writing was the writing was done like as a joke because it was like referencing Seattle and PAX a lot. Mm. Okay. But uh, like it, it was that signature like Suda Fifty One weird writing style that was enjoyable. So like I, if you like like the dialogue of No More Heroes, then you will like the dialogue of this game. Cool. Okay. That's and good. of course, good the hear. style is is very is very Suda. Yeah. And, and I was it's Switch exclusive, right? Uh, I believe so. Okay. That was the only booth I saw it at, anyways. Pretty sure it's just exclusive to Switch. How did, did you how did you guys play it with like a pro controller? Or uh, did you get I, a singular Joy-Con? I had a I had a pro controller and Tom had two Joy-Cons. Okay. How's the HD rumble? I don't remember it, so I'm but I'm assuming it's there. Okay, so pretty accurate to just standard HD rumble. Yeah. yeah. You still and uh, you still had to shake the controller to charge your sword. Perfect. Great. Yeah, but like, yeah, like you click in the left thumbstick and then you just like shake the Joy-Con and it just like charges. Yeah, you don't have to do it nearly as much as you did with the Wii though. Oh, but you will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, I got to play Devil May Cry Five. That was probably the longest lineup I got in for. Okay, was that the, that the game you wanted to play the most? Yeah, yeah. As soon as I knew it was there, I wanted to go. They had a pizza party with it as well, but it was during the panel, so I missed that as well. Yeah. So I need uh, to know, does it play yeah. well? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm, Did you yeah. play four? No. Like actual four or actual four? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I loved. I, and, well, I yeah, didn't love it, but it, I liked it. <laughs> like the demo was Nero, and yeah. he plays exactly like he does in four. Oh, okay. Like the, yeah. There's the sword revving. There's uh, there's the grappling hook, so you can grab enemies. Uh, there's like almost all of his moves are intact from that. Even the fucking air guitar taunt is still in there. Okay, so but, some some people don't grow up <laughs> at all. Yeah, I love it. But the one thing that is different is uh, he's missing his arm now, so he has a robotic arm instead. Okay. The mm -hmm. the robotic arm is at least in the demo they only had two. There's probably more in the actual game. Uh, you get different arms that you find along the way, and they give you different moves for your B button. The uh, standard B button, or the standard arm, was the same as it was in 4. Like, you shoot a giant hand in front of you, it can do grabs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there was another one that actually, like, lets you do, like, a launcher from, like, the ground diagonally forward in air. So if you wanted to do, like, extended air combos or, like, catch up to people quickly, you could do that. Okay. So it was really good for like keeping your combo going, but like I, it didn't mesh well with my style. So uh, like I always I preferred the other arm better. There's also a move where you can just self destruct the arm to like attack everyone around you, but it obviously destroys the arm, and you need to find more one more of them around. Okay, interesting. Oh, so they're not just they're not just like a special ability. Like I'm equipping this arm now. It's like a, it's like a one time use item. Um, it you can as far as I could tell, you could use it as much as you wanted. But if you use the destructor, the destruction move, it was gone. Okay. Maybe, it must okay, do a maybe lot of damage, that one's like though. Really good. Yeah. yeah, it did a fair amount of damage. Yeah. Okay. Sure. It also seemed like a close range, like panic attack, to save yourself from getting damaged. So. Okay. Yeah. I think it was called like Devil Breaker or something like that. Okay. What if I'm a big fan of DMC? Um. Then you're probably going to be disappointed because they didn't. They said they took some lessons from the game, but like, uh, it mainly more or less feels like classic DMC. Cool, I'm in. That's fine. I mean, I like regular Devil May Cry too. Sure, or, as well, I should say. <laughs> um, I just liked DMC probably the most. That's sure. fair. Mm -hmm. Um, playing through the demo, it was interesting. You you went through like uh, I assume one of the starting stages, and then you had to fight a big boss. Uh, the bosses were pretty good. They have some things that I have not seen in previous DMC games before. I actually got lit on fire and kept taking contact damage until I actually stopped, dropped, and rolled to put out the fire. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I almost lost the demo fight because I didn't realize it until I almost died. So. And I'm assuming that's just like dodge a bunch, right? To yeah. roll? Okay. Yeah. Assassin's Creed does the did the same thing. I'm Origins, if you're on fire, you have to like roll around on the ground. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Um, uh, while I was playing the demo, the guy next to me, 
he had done the demo a bunch too, and uh, he was trying to S rank the demo because apparently no one had done it at PAX and only two people had done it at GamesCon. So the the dev of the game was there watching him play, and uh, I had I like I paused my demo halfway through just to watch him get through it. <laughs> the only way you could S rank it was to not get hit ever in the demo. Okay. Okay. Uh, he ended the the final boss fight with like a triple S like style rank. Like he was doing ridiculously good. It was real fun to watch. And like everyone started cheering when he uh, when he got it. It was hilarious. Nice. Cool. They no, I'm excited swag. for my cry five. Uh, I would, yeah, they gave us uh, randomized pins. Okay. And um, which are supposed to look like the collectibles in the game. But the one I got, I don't recognize. It was like a diamond. Hmm. Okay. But it doesn't look. It must be one of the new items because it doesn't look like anything currently there. Cool. Uh, some of my other friends got like the green orbs, the red orbs, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Sure. Uh, that comes out in March. I'm super pumped for that. Yeah. Cool. Me too. Uh, what else? I played Gato Roboto, which was recently announced. Uh, developers publishing that one. It is a monochrome Metroid. Yeah. Where cat you Metroid, play right? as a yeah, where you play as a cat who has a giant mech suit. Yeah. I have never heard about this. It it literally got announced like last week. Yeah. Very true. It looks cute. So like, <laughs> it is really fun. It played really good. Okay, cool. Yeah, like you run around finding upgrades for your suit. Uh, instead of having a morph ball, you literally just hop out of your mech suit and run <laughs> around as a cat. This is a very cute cat. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently the cat can swim too because the only way to swim in water was to get out of the suit. If you jumped in in the water, it just exploded. That's odd. You would think the cat would would want yeah, to be in right. the suit. Yeah, I thought the same, but like, whatever. Yeah. I, I hopped in halfway through someone's demo, so I was just trying to figure it out. <laughs> it is. Really that was cute. really fun. I don't know when that's coming out, but I'm excited for it. Uh, it just says 2019 on the reveal trailer page. All right. I also got to play Killer Queen Black, which is the arcade, the Switch version of Killer Queen. The yeah, have, have you played Killer Queen? Yeah. Okay, I haven't played Killer Queen. So Killer Although Queen, I'm going to Portland next month, and I believe Ground Control, yes. which is a barcade there, has it. Uh, yeah, so that's, I, I think that's one of the first places it was at, actually. I believe so, yeah. yeah. And I'm going up there with my with my Quidditch team, so I'll definitely have a, a whole group of people that are nerdy and will want to play it. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, So Killer Queen is a five-on-five, five, like the arcade game is a five-on-five five, uh, arcade game where you're against another team. And uh, you are one player plays as the queen on their team and the other four are drones. The drone like the team has to win one of three ways, either militarily by killing the other queen three times. Economically, by collecting these little like berries that are around the map and bringing back about, I think, 20 of them. OK. Or by snail. There's a snail somewhere on the map, and if you hold a berry and hop on him, you run towards a uh, a uh, flag. And if okay. you get to the flag in time, you win. Like, it's a race. So it's kind of like but, a nuke option. Like, this other stuff's not working. Get the snail. Yeah. <laughs> something. But the, the, the trick with that is, like, um, you need to have a berry in your hand to move him, I think. And the only way, like, the other team can kill you if you're on the snail, or if they're not a class that can actually do killing, they can sacrifice their bodies to the snail to be eaten to stop the snail from moving. Okay, but does right, the snail get reset, or is he always <clears throat> close? Snail to the stays point? wherever he was. Yeah, yeah, the snail moves really slow, so it's more of like a stealth way to kind of win. So it seems like they balanced it out in black because the snail was definitely faster than I remember it ever being. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, that's good. Um, I'm looking forward to playing it. Yeah, so did, Killer Queen did it have online multiplayer. Yes, that's what I'm about to talk about. So Killer Queen Black, the Switch version is four on four, so it's uh, balanced a little differently. There's multiple maps, uh, and they did something really cool, which I'm curious to see how it's actually going to work. They talked about the black team because normally it's blue versus yellow, or mm -hmm. blue versus gold, whatever. Um, the black team is an online exclusive King of the Hill style setup where whoever's like won the most matches or whatever becomes the black team. And they stay the black team until someone beats them, and then they become the black team. Dude. But what they're gonna what they're gonna do with this is that whatever team is the black team will be live streamed twenty four hours a day <laughs> on their channel. 
Okay. So just they're... well for as long as they're the black team, right? As long as they're the black team. Yeah. yeah. So okay. like there basically there is a gonna be a Killer Queen Black s- streaming page somewhere other on Twitch or whatever mm-hmm. that is exclusively showing like the best players in Killer Queen permanently, right. which is kind, which it. is really cool. I like the idea behind it. I really yeah. like that a lot. Yeah. That is it cool. played it played really good. I was a big fan of it. Um but I already like the original Killer Queen, so I just it's just, it's just more but better. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, that uh, that game needs to be in more hands. So yeah, I forget when that's coming out. I think it's like October. It's soon ish. Oh, is it? Great. To me, that sounds like a breach of privacy. How? You're just showing you playing the game. Yeah, it's not like they can get any. In, not going to see your face or anything. Yeah, so. it's nothing like that. It's not like they're actually like coming to your house to like interview you or anything. Well, that would like be that. even just... better. They're just showing your gameplay. That's just all. Just showing right? the gameplay, yeah. Uh, and you know what? I bet there might even be a way for you to like turn that off. I wouldn't be surprised if you want. I mean, to, like, it's, I think it's also like in an exclusive like playlist, so I think you have to willingly pick it. That's actually there's probably a thing. Yeah, if you choose to play here, you are opting in to being streamed. That's probably what sure. it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else did I play? What the golf? Now, this was one I was actually told to go check out by by a viewer. Okay. Um, I don't know what studio does, does this, or I don't know if it's their first time or not. But um, basically, this was just like a really quirky golf game where it starts normally like you shoot, you like charge a meter, you shoot the ball into the hole. And then it starts changing the rules on you. So like the next hole... Your, your golfer goes to make a swing, but then the golfer moves instead of the ball, so you have to get the golfer to the goal. Oh, I I saw this on... There was some show... I don't know if it was a Nintendo Direct or an E3 thing. I remember someone actually showing this game off. Yeah. So, like, then the next hole is, like, you have a house that you have to get to the, to the uh, golf hole. And then the next round might be, like, a car you have to drive to the, the hole... And then suddenly it turned into super hot where you were, awesome. shooting the, you were shooting the golf ball towards the hole, but you also had to pick up guns to shoot people that were shooting at you. And, Sounds and, great. Even, and even at the end, it starts going like super putt, super putt. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. This says it's coming out late summer 2018. So, oh uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's sometime next year. I talked to the dev. No, no, no. 2018. Yeah, I know. Like it's been re- redone. It's it's next year. Yeah. Oh, okay. Steam page is showing 2019. This is by a developer called Triband. They do have a game coming out this year called Keyboard Sports Saving Qwerty. And Interesting. That's being published by Humble Bundle. So, okay. There you All go. Right. Yeah. So like later on, like the golf ball gets a grappling hook, so you need to figure out how to swing towards the <laughs> hole on like a two D platform. Like the game is ridiculous, but it was so fun to play. This sounds great. Yeah. It w- it was a fun, charming game, and I can't wait for the full thing to come out. Yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, I didn't play much else in the indie booth. I watched a couple demos. Like um, Reese was playing this game called Get in the Car Loser, oh, which from, looks to be um, Christine Love. The... Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it basically looked like a Death Road to Canada style like road trip game, but like with more plot and about like a group of friends like going to seal the ancient evil while also managing a car trip and staying friends. It right, looks yeah, really it's like interesting. An RPG. It, yeah, it played a lot like um fuck, what's it called? Valkyrie Profile, where like each player is on like a different button and you'd kind of just combo them together. Okay. S- speaking of Valkyrie Profile, Indivisible was also there as a demo. So I watched that for a little bit. That's still looking really good. Cool. Um, there was some ASCII art game that Reese played as well for a bit, but I can't remember the name of it right now. But it was also another really fun watch. Like it was literally like, um, just done like, oh, here's a bunch of like slashes, circles, and like periods and stuff like that to make art for like trees. You had to like craft items to get through zones. You had to pick <laughs> up items and like it. Like it looked like a proper like classic text based RPG. Sure. Cool. Okay. Um, I also played Full Quiet. So this was a game for the NES that's coming out next year. For the NES? Yeah. Okay. This is this is done by the guys who made uh, Halloween Haunted 95 and 96, or 85 rather, and 86, which were uh, two beat-em-ups they also made for the NES. They're, they're like a homebrew NES company. 
But their stuff is also on Steam and I think now um, Xbox 360 or Xbox One rather. Right. Okay. Um, this one is like a weird like adventure game where you had to kind of run around like fighting monsters with your gun, but you also had to solve puzzles. Like at one point, I had to do uh, a pipe maze style puzzle. I had to go around finding switches and like try to solve this mystery about like why these monsters are showing up in your town. It was kind of fun. I liked it. Yeah, you're like a mountain okay. man or something, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. This was a Kickstarter. Uh, yeah, game. so they they they've started kickstarting their NES games, and mm -hmm. uh, they were fun. Like I I liked the the Halloween haunted games. They were fun beat 'em up. So I'm excited for this. This looks cool. Yeah. Cool. And uh, I didn't play this, but I wanted to talk about this because it got announced at PAX. Uh, <laughs> there's a Super Meat Boy card game now. Okay. All right. I, I understood it like sold out pretty quick. Yeah, it's like Super Meat Boy Rival Rush or something like that. Yeah, the way that's the, what it's called. The, yeah, the way the game works is that you lay down like trap rooms and then you have to play cards quickly to try to like get through the traps and stuff like that. Okay. They sold they sold booster pack or like a main starter deck, but the, even the starter decks were a little randomized, so you had to like try to get other I think I don't they didn't have any booster packs, which was weird. But supposedly the deck all the decks were slightly different. I have one, I just haven't played it yet. I don't have anyone to play it with. Okay. How much was it? Uh, 20 bucks, I think. Okay. 10 bucks, 20 bucks. It was cheap. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they were giving out like a free promo card uh, if you if you bought it there. So it was cool. They also had Super Meat Boy Forever on demo again, but... Oh, Kyle Pulver's part of Team Meat now with Ptolemy. I didn't know that. Neat. Who's Kyle Pulver? He is an indie dev that did... What's that game called now? Offspring Fling. Okay, I've heard of that. And a bunch of other it. stuff. Oh. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that one too. Yeah. No, he's a cool guy, actually. I I was just more surprised that <laughs> it they mm -hmm. it didn't seem like uh, those two would know each other at all, but they're part of the same thing now, so that's cool. John, you shrugged off Super Meat Boy Forever. What what was that? <laughs> well, because like, I played that demo like four years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I asked him, like, hey, I hate to ask this, but, like, what's the word on Me Boy Forever? He's like, nope, still don't have a date. Sorry. <laughs> but the demo looked pretty fleshed out that they had there, so they've got to be coming close, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much all I can remember playing at PAX, but uh, I did also finally get the play game I've been excited about since PAX East, The Messenger. Yes. This came, this came out on Thursday. Uh, I beat it Wednesday. That game's really the day good. before. Yeah, I time traveled. <laughs> yeah, it was yep. real good. That's how fast you were. Yeah. No, that game's awesome. It's I hear it good. goes to some crazy places. Don't spoil it for me. <laughs> yeah, um, it definitely does go to some crazy places. The uh, the plot's not much to think about, but the dialogue in the game is phenomenal. Yeah, it's okay. there's a lot of there's a lot of optional dialogue that you can go to, and like it's very very sharply written. Paul and I were talking about this a bit last week. He had like just started it. Mm. Um, and we had a whole bunch of confusion about what its price was because it was yeah. coming up as something different for me than what he was seeing, regardless of the currency we were looking at. So uh, the game, the game is 20 bucks if you just buy it, but on the switch, if you own any devolver game, so that's like enter the gungeon minute, a couple other games, yep. you get, I think a 20% discount or something 15. like that. 15. That's and what it was. And on Steam, if you own Enter the Gungeon specifically and you pick it up in the next couple days, you get 20% off. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That game is really good. Yeah. I am so glad I played it. Uh, if you don't know what Messenger is, basically imagine like a more linear, more forgiving Ninja Gaiden that just goes to some crazy lengths. I just don't want to go into too much detail, but. Totally. Yeah, it, I'm looking was, forward to picking it up. I just, I don't. I like I have multiple Switch games I'm playing right now, so it just yeah. I don't have the time for it. So it's like yeah. I can I can let it wait for a bit, and then maybe it'll be on sale when I do have time. But I'm mm. I'm excited. I've heard some great things. Yeah, I I almost recommend getting to it sooner so you don't have some of the stuff spoiled for you. Because if you haven't been paying attention to the trailers or stuff, there's there's some things. I haven't been. I don't know much. About, I just I've just been hearing opinions basically. Mm. Yeah. No, that game that game's probably gonna be my top five for the year. Oh wow. Yeah, it's that really way, good. I enjoyed it that much. It's probably in my top 10 for sure. So far, anyway. Spider-Man Dude yeah. has come out. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, and that's going to take it. up ten slots. Yep, all there of them. Go. That's how it works. <laughs> each one for, for each one for letter each and the suit. hyphen. Okay. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Yeah. That's ten. That's ten. <laughs> All well, right, so I big have, thumbs I up for Messenger. It. Super big thumbs up. Highly recommend it. What'd you play it on? Switch. Switch. Yeah, it's also on Steam and, and good old games. And that's all I played. Uh, all right, Paul, why don't you keep going? You've been playing the Messenger as well. Yeah, it's dope. I'm not going to talk about it for the same reasons, but it's a modernized Ninja Gaiden. If that sounds cool to you, you should definitely pick it up. But not as hard. We need to class to clarify <laughs> It's because I had a lot of people yeah. that were like, this game looks like it might be too hard. I'm like, no, it's really not. <laughs> yeah. Like the hardest there are some points that'll stop you. The hardest thing is that sometimes when you want to like free fall and you accidentally like touch a ledge, you'll stick to it and you're just like, oh no. And then that's it. Like yeah, that's the hardest like that. thing. There, gets. there are some areas that are like pretty weirdly balanced for difficulty. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you haven't finished the game yet, Paul. I have not, no. There's a scene near the very end that's surprisingly difficult compared to how the rest okay. of the game is. It, it, like, it almost seems exclusively meant to make you die a couple times. So I have not felt like there has been a ramp up yet at all. Like it's all stayed pretty much the same like amount of difficulty shallowness. I'm in the shallow end this whole time. Can you so. tell me where you are without spoiling it for Sean? Or... Uh... Two, Please don't spoil it for Sean. Two hours, maybe? Have you gotten to the ice world yet? I think that's where I'm going to, because I stopped after beating a boss. You probably beat uh, the soup boss, for lack of a better term. Is that the last boss you fought? <laughs> no, maybe that's the next boss I'm on then. Is the background red or white? It's red. Oh, and that's where you are now? Is this where you started? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, you're you're not at the ice stage. So that's probably next, then? Yeah. Okay. You're at the point where it's going to start ramping up. Ramping up? Okay. That's, yeah. Oh, yeah, did you get the new item in the red area yet? No? Like, I stopped at the beginning of the area. Okay. Yeah, as soon, you're going to go, like, three screens in, get a new item, and then you're going to be like, oh, my God, the game has changed. Okay. Every time you know I've gotten an item, the game has changed. It's a, a significant you guys got to stop, amount. man. I know. I know. Uh, Play the damn game, Sean. I, I plan to. I plan to. Yeah. No, it's very good. It's very good. Uh, Games I, are coming out. I've been playing a bunch of small stuff. Uh, I'm going to be playing more of it today, which is why it's not on the list, but Battlefield 5 demo or open beta is on right now. That's a Battlefield game, and it's pretty fun. I'm going to be playing with a group of friends later, so we'll see how that squad experience is in this new one. But, yeah, that thing's beautiful and plays like a good shooter, so it is Battlefield again. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege had its update this week, Grim Sky. Oh, yeah, I got an 8 gigabyte download that yeah. my Xbox didn't download on its own for some reason. I don't understand what rest mode is supposed to do. <laughs> it's supposed to piss you off it is Clearly, succeeding it's like so i turn it on it's like why didn't you download this like isn't yeah. that the whole point uh so the new operators maverick and clash uh yeah. Ma maverick being the new attacker who has a blowtorch that can make peak holes through the solid metal walls to get like the reinforced cheap kills. walls yep and uh, clash who is a defender with a giant shield and a t with a taser on it that can slow attackers running at her down and just be basically when a window is broken open or a doorway she could like literally just take up that whole spot and just like harass people is she's annoying you need like two people because you have to like get her behind her somehow no you just have to hit her with a melee attack and then she like it makes oh. her shield go all like whoa and then you can shoot her okay good to know okay. yeah that's why she has the taser to slow attackers down so she can like move backwards basically Otherwise, she's pretty useless. Uh, they're both super fun. I've been having a blast with both of them. Uh, I've been playing as Fuse and yeah. Capcan. Yeah, still. Yep. They're, those no, are good never ones. Change. <laughs> yeah, I like those ones. War never changes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, they're they're good ones. So, good on you. 
Um, Mega Man 11 demo is a thing. Oh, yeah. And that plays, like, exactly how I want a new Mega Man game to play. I really, really like it a lot. I really like the double gear feature of being able to slow down time or make your, like, empower your attacks. And uh, in the demo, they give you two, like, Robot Master abilities. One is a drill-type attack where it just kind of, like... It's like a dash with, like, a drill on the end of it so you can hurt enemies at the end of the dash or, like, you could go through them if they're weak enough. And an electrical attack, which kind of rides along the walls but also has a giant electrical ball where you shoot it to, like, kill anything that's coming in that area, which I think are both very good ways to just showcase different traversal and, like, level mechanics that the Robot Masters uh, stuff will give you. It's... It's one of those games done right in the way that I was hoping Mighty Number no. Nine would be and wasn't. It this is the game I wanted, so I'm super super stoked for that full thing. Um, other than that, I've been playing Tabletop Simulator because the Binding of Isaac Four Souls card game. Now that the Kickstarter is over, is out on that. Uh, so Edmund McMillan put out all of the cards as a on a spoiler page and fans have put that into tabletop simulator and uh, me and a group of friends have just been playing whenever we could every night throughout this week and uh just kind of play testing it and i've been tweeting back at edmund saying like yo is this supposed to be this broken and he's been like yep so <laughs> that game Wait, so is he, he willingly put it up in, for tabletop sim and he's okay with that i'm surprised he did not but he has not taken this one down. He took down the ones that were coming out before he put out all the cards in a spoiler, and he has not put, took it, taken them down since. So, because you can no longer buy this game. <laughs> that's that's actually a fair point. I didn't think of that. Yeah, so the Kickstarter is over, and I think the community has just kind of agreed that people that didn't care about this game, like, they can't buy it now anyway, so whatever. Uh, so yeah, we've been playing it and uh, kind of theory crafting and making broken runs and stuff, and it's super, super cool. For anybody who doesn't know what it plays like, if you know Magic the Gathering, it plays like the Commander uh, style of gameplay, or EDH, as it might be more known for people that are in the Magic the Gathering community or whatever. It plays like a very watered-down basic version of that, where every turn you draw a card you are able to play one loot card and like use whatever abilities you want to attack either the monster deck or attack other players for your benefit. The first player to end their turn with four souls is the winner, and you get souls by killing uh, boss monsters or by like fucking over your friends in some way, usually. So yeah, it's been really, really cool, and I am looking forward to playing much, 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 much more of that. I'm excited for my stuff to ship. And to be honest, it's reminded me that, like, I haven't gotten that survey asking me a bunch of stuff yet. So I should probably check Kickstarter because I want that stuff to send to me at some point since I paid for it. Really? Because I, I think I got mine. Okay. I'll check after the podcast is over or, like, when Sean's talking, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> because getting a little nervous <laughs> at this point. So, you know, maybe I went to spam. Yeah, uh, Binding of Isaac, Four Souls. If you have Tabletop Simulator, you can try it out there, and I highly suggest you find at least two other friends to play with you, because we've tried. I tried with one person. 1v1 is doable, but not nearly as fun as four people, obviously, but even three people is fine in a pinch as well. But uh, that's all I've been playing. Yeah, all check right, around I'm... August 20th. That's when mine came in. Holy shit, okay. Uh, I haven't been playing a ton. Uh, I've been playing through Thumper, uh, which is that rhythm-like game. came out last year from some ex-Harmonics devs. Um, you're this weird, like, metal scarab creature on a track flying through this, like, weird psychedelic nightmare landscape. Um, and then different, uh, like, color cues or uh corners will come at you and you need to react in certain ways so if there's like um if there's like a color on the ground you need to hit a on that um 
if there's lines across the thing, you need to hold down A. Uh, every kind of corner, you need to hold the direction it's turning and A. There's ones where you need to like jump in the air. I just made it to level four. There's 10 in total, but each stage is getting longer and longer. Um, for example, like each each stage has like checkpoints throughout it. And the first one, it has only like, I want to say maybe 15 checkpoints. And then stage four has 30 checkpoints. Stage four, every stage enters at, like adds a new mechanic. Uh, stage four end adds a second track that you have to jump back and forth between, which makes it really hard because it was already getting pretty difficult. And now I need to jump back and forth and do all this stuff. It's a cool game, though. Um, like these people, like th they definitely know the audio element of it. So it's I'm enjoying it the most with like headphones on. Yeah. Um, and it is just like a cool, like weird experience playing this game. Um, what's really great, though, is uh, it's like two hits and you're out. Uh, but you just go back to the last checkpoint and each checkpoint, if you're playing perfectly, each checkpoint is maybe like 30 seconds long. Um, so even if you're playing badly, you'll kind of eventually like memorize this checkpoints pattern and you'll get through it. So it's not like you need to bang your head against anything. Mm -hmm. um, and you can even stop halfway through a stage and then pick up at the checkpoint you were at, uh, which is really nice. And you can like go back to previous checkpoints if you're trying to like S rank each one um, or like, you know, get a better score. I, I wanted to get the one achievement for getting um, for S ranking an entire level. So that was really nice being able to just go back to whatever checkpoint I wanted to and play that section. I'm kind of excited to hear your thoughts on this in regards to Runner 3, which is kind of similar in a different way later when we do the Runner 3 thing, maybe. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really think about that. I don't know if I, hmm. I guess mechanically they're very similar, except this is from yeah. behi behind the back. Sure. Uh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, I guess they're, they're, kind of, they're somewhat similar. Well, um, it can percolate a little bit because we'll do that after this show. Right, yeah. Um, I'm playing this on Xbox One. Uh, I think it was on sale for like five bucks a week or two ago. Oh. Uh, I had been thinking of picking it up because it, it gets real cheap. I think it's $3 on phones right now. But I was like, this. I don't think this is a game I want to play on like the train. Because like, you want your headphones, you want the music, and you just kind of want to be in this space. I think this game would be really awesome in VR, and I know you can play it in VR. Um I know on the uh, PlayStation, at least you can. I'm assuming like on Oculus, you can as well. That would be very cool. And each stage has this crazy like metal skull boss that's covered in spikes that just like comes over the horizon at you. Like it is a trippy game. It is a it is a trippy game. It's cool. Uh, and then just today, I started playing Tumble Seed on my Switch. Uh, Tumble Seed is five bucks right now on the Switch. It's on sale. So if you're somewhat interested in this game, I would I would probably recommend it on PC as well. I just noticed. Is it discounted on PC as well? I think I had I think they had tweeted out that this is the first time it's been under five dollars on the Switch. Um, so if you've been waiting for that uh, platform, uh, then look for that one. This mm -hmm. game came out like one or two week or two, one or two years ago. Um, they rec. I'm trying to recall, remember what game they referred to it as. Uh, I wasn't familiar with it, but another good. Um, comparison is that labyrinth toy where you're tr you're like rolling the marble through yeah. mm -hmm. through the maze and it, you don't want it to fall in the holes. It's like that if it was 2D. Monkey um, ball also. Monkey ball, okay, sure. Yeah. Um, but this is basically, so it's, you know, I'm playing it on my Switch. Each uh, analog stick controls one side of this platform and then there's a little ball or a seed in the game that sits in the middle and you want to you know rotate you know tilt the uh platform one way to make it roll down that platform while also raising the platform in general to get to the top of the mountain that's the that's kind of the narrative arc and there's fun little creatures that you'll get to talk to and stuff there's a little story going on and then holes will be opened up that you can fall into that you don't want to and they consider it a roguelike where you're going to die and start again but you get like checkpoints and one whatnot i haven't played it enough yet to die so far i'm actually going pretty slowly which is kind of the name of the game in this although i know it definitely gets harder where some of the enemies or obstacles are moving so you do have to speed up mm -hmm. um what's really great is it even has like a little dot on the center of the uh of, on the center of the um section of the platform that the seed is on. So you can kind of always tell if you're level or not, 
which is which is just a really great indicator um, for when you're trying to like slow down in one way and you don't want to be rolling in a certain way. You just want the the seed to sit there. Uh, it has a great look, great music. Um, so yeah, again, I would check that out. That's Tumble Seed and it's on sale right now for like five dollars. Only zero point two percent of P players actually completed the game based on their data, apparently. Oh, I'm assuming it's gonna get real hard. Like I said, I'm yeah. not too far into it. I've been playing from like maybe thirty minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm liking it. it. I'm liking the way it looks and everything. It's cool. Yeah, for sure. And with that, let's go to some news. Cool. Um, coming at you. So I guess one of the big things this week was there was supposed to be a Nintendo direct and it was delayed due to a huge earthquake in Japan. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of things were planned to come out or be announced based on the timing of this direct, and those things have still been getting announced or getting leaked. Mm. So a few things from that: uh, Sid Meier's Civilization Six is coming to Switch in November. Okay, that's a pretty big game coming. Although now it looks like that page has been taken down, so that's cool. Um, also, some games are starting to pop up talking about their cloud saves on the Switch. I believe a. Uh, one specifically, there was a Japanese game that came out that on the back it even had documentation taught saying it has cloud save. Uh, so this kind of points to this direct was probably going to have a whole section about the Nintendo online service, which makes sense. That's supposed to go live later this month, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so that's definitely happening. Uh, one of the big ones is that the Yoshi game, its title was leaked, and that's going to be called Yoshi's Crafted World. Uh, we don't have any other information, but theoretically they were going to talk about that in the direct as well. I don't know if I said it earlier that direct is get, got delayed to next week at some point. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to edit that direct because they would have said like, and we'll have more to say on this later, but the trailer's already been out for some of these things or leaked. I wonder if they're going to change any of the terminology or mm -hmm. even address it at all or just be like, nope, this is what we would have put out last week. So yeah, keep that in it's mind. probably just the same video file they're going to set to go live on a different date. Again, uh, Yoshi's Crafted World 2019. That's all we got right now. Cool. This was pretty weird. THQ Nordic bought the Kingdoms of Amalur IP. That makes a lot of sense. Kingdoms of Amalur had so much time and money put into the story building that they have, like, a full thing. They have, like, a whole universe they could do something with. So, sure. That's fine. I, I just... I had heard that the Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning was good. It was. I didn't hear many people playing it, though. So I'm surprised they picked this up. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see what they do with it, because that's one of the failure points of Kingdoms of Amalur, right? Is that they got so much money, and they kind of put out, like, an okay game and not an amazing one. <laughs> right, well, because so. a lot of it was going into the MMO they were working on. Exactly. That got canceled. Yeah. Um. So, like, who knows? I, do they get that part of that MMO? Is that going to get brought to life again? Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, the I tweet from THQ Nordic basically says, we are beyond proud to announce that THQ Nordic has acquired the Kingdoms of Amalur IP, among other assets, from 38 Studios. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Sure. <laughs> That's fine. Because I was kind of digging the world they were building in Reckoning there that single player mmo thing they were doing yeah uh moving on henry cavill has been cast as uh is it geralt or gerald from the witcher gerald gerald so it's gonna be henry cavill what do you guys think yeah yeah good good casting sure okay yeah i can see it <laughs> he has the, he's a like... big dude gerald is supposed to be a big dude has like the very strong features and stuff like yeah sure he fits very, it fine yeah broad chin yeah okay yep so that's happening uh this was kind of interesting the devs for swords and sorcery uh it was announced that that game is coming to uh switch yeah <clears throat> and one of the questions uh people were wondering was is it going to have the twitter integration that the that the, the phone version did yeah and for those who don't know the phone version of sword and sorcery you could basically like output a tweet for any kind of dialogue that popped up and there would be like a hashtag about the game and stuff and this was super early on in twitter so it hadn't been like overdone and annoying yet yeah um they were asked is is the switch version going to have uh 
the Twitter version and the dev came back and I'll just kind of read the quote here. Twitter support has been cut from sorcery from the sorcery switch edition said creative director, Chris. Oh man. P.O. Trowski. Uh, the reason for this is simple. When we first launched sorcery many moons ago, Twitter was fun and nice and cool. <laughs> now in the year 2018, Twitter is a vat of toxic waste and we want nothing to do with it. Twitter was never fun, nice, and cool, but he's right. It is a toxic waste, so. Um, <laughs> it was also another, uh, they also reached out to Cappy, and they said, since our prior experiment in 2011, social networks have proven to be catastrophic for society. <laughs> so we now encourage isolation and regretful reflection. Oh, I love it. That's so good. Uh, so anyways, that feature is not going to be in the Switch version. Yeah. Uh, and then, Paul, you brought this one up. I did. So PS Now support ha is on the PC. Um, I was playing with it yesterday cool. so I could talk about it a little bit. It works fine. It's an app that you download on your PC that you start up kind of like a launcher. And if you have PS Now, which I had to up to, like, try it out and stuff. Um, and there's a seven-day trial as well if, uh, if you're interested in trying it yourself and you don't have a PlayStation. Um, you download this app like a launcher, and then there's just all the games you can play. And you click on a game, and then it says, okay, cool, plug in a controller of some sort. And they recommend a uh, DualShock 4, but if they don't read a DualShock 4, they'll look for DualShock 3. And if they don't read that's a DualShock 3, they'll just say, okay, you can't, like, you're not going to get uh, the same experience with... Uh, this stuff especially if you need the touchpad for anything like just be aware of that and you can just be like yeah whatever and it sure shit so you can it use works. a 360 controller you can use a 360 controller yeah and sure shit it works like i was playing katamari yesterday for a while just for the hell of it to try that out <clears throat> and then i loaded up what the hell was it now i loaded up another game that i didn't want to play bloodborne because i thought that'd be too easy but bloodborne is available for people that don't have a playstation 4 uh, and do you have to pay for each of these games? No, it's kind of like a Netflix service. It's a their so streaming it's like Game service. Pass. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Kind of. But oh, but so the difference is you're streaming it. You're streaming it. That's a thing. So what you need is a connection that like can do at least four to five megabytes a sec or megabits a second. Otherwise, you're gonna get latency issues. Okay. Uh, I do have that connection. So it was no problem for me. I was able to play whatever game I wanted. Totally fine. Where I didn't try it is I did not try any like games with an online component, which I probably should have because I'd be interested to see how that works. But uh, yeah, I think that if you don't have a PlayStation or a PlayStation 4 and you want to try some exclusives, I think this is a great way to go about that, especially since you can start a seven day trial for free and then just not up it again. But if you do like it, I think it's 20 bucks a month, which is like steep. That's steep compared to Game Pass, which yeah. they let you download the games. You don't have to worry about streaming. So they run perfect. Yeah. And Game Pass is 10 bucks a month. Yeah, it's steep. If you go higher amount of months, I think it's like 35 bucks for three months. Like it discounts as you go up at, with your loyalty, I guess, to it. Sure. Um. But yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised they're not discounting already when like, yeah, who's talking about uh, PlayStation now? Everyone's talking Nobody. about Game Pass. Exactly. And even to download this fucking thing, it was a little confusing. You have to go to PSNow.com or whatever. And then there you have to go get PS Now. And then there you can say, OK, I'm on a PC and then download the app. There's not just a big banner that says on PC, try Bloodborne now. Like they're they're marketing this so poorly that I think. It is a service to talk about how to get it here. So you're welcome, well, that's the first thing, of that all. They've always had that problem with PlayStation <laughs> yeah. Now. Yeah, it's it's repugnant that they're able to just somehow try to get people and then not put any work into it. But the basic idea is if you have a PC, you wanted to try Bloodborne because you really like the Souls games and you weren't going to buy a PS4 for it ever, just download this thing, try it out for seven days, and then don't re-upload or re-up on it but there's a bunch of other stuff on there too there's like red dead redemption if you wanted to check that out before two comes out and they have the undead nightmare 
like download as well if you wanted to try that Halloween stuff. There's so a bunch of other so cool it's not horror just games. Exclusives. No, there's a whole bunch of like cool stuff on there as well. But the big titles right now that weren't available before are like Bloodborne and um, there is a list here. I'm just gonna quickly look up. So the new stuff that they added are Bloodborne, Bard's Gold, Exiles, and God Eater Resurrection, Moto Racer Four, The Dwarves, whatever the fuck that is. Shines, the Light Lightning Kingdom, Project Cars, and Aces of the Luftwaffe. So, yeah, I don't know. I just think it is a cool thing if you have a decent PC and you don't have a PS4 to try out some PlayStation games, and I highly recommend doing so for free while you can for seven days. All right, let's move into some questions. Top down perspective at gmail.com is the email address. Uh, you can also send questions in on Twitter at TDP Podcast, the Facebook group, the Discord channel, and uh, John's P.O. Box. I'll read this first one from James. Mm -hmm. He says Recently, my roommates and I had a discussion about our differing opinions on spoilers. For context, they don't like spoilers of any caliber, whereas I am okay with light spoilers. We sort of came to the conclusion, although one of my roommates still says I'm wrong, <laughs> that this was because they are more technical when going through something and I am more emotional. Hmm. As an example, when going through a murder mystery game, if they know who the killer is beforehand, they stop focusing on the story at hand and look for any detail that points to it. In contrast, if I know who the killer is beforehand, I'm still going along for the ride and still get emotionally invested in the game. Because to me... If something is well made, light spoilers shouldn't take away from the experience. But to my roommates, it does. Okay. With all that out of the way, what would you say you are more? Sorry, would you say you are more technically minded when going through something, or more emotional? Okay. First of all, super dismissive of your friends. Um, <laughs> just or at least this one. This, this roommate. Oh, roommate, you're just emotional. It's like, mm. excuse me, what? <laughs> We're talking about spoilers. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, um, I don't care at all about spoilers. Uh, to an extent, I, I don't like to be spoiled. Yeah, I don't care at all about well, it. Well, no one likes to be spoiled per se. Yeah, it doesn't bother. There's a lot of times where knowing a cool thing or a cool thing a game does will make me actually check it out rather than ignore it. Um, that being said, probably more emotional because I like I won't let knowing what is going to happen affect my decisions on like trying to stop it or whatever because like I know it's going to happen, so I'm not gonna like look for the clues that point to the killer. Because that's taking away from the experience of playing the game just in general. Just like trying to min-max it. Especially like the first time through. So yeah, probably See, more I'll, emotional. I'll I'll do both, honestly. Like if I know, I'll be like, alright. I know this person at the end is going to be the person who does it. So I'm going to see if there's any tales about it. But I also enjoy the journey along the way to figure out like... Sure. What they've done, yeah. Yeah, I don't I think, think it's binary. I, I think I start off more emotional and i'm basing that on like because i won't watch scary movies because i get too like i get too bought in real quickly so even if if people are joking like but it was so corny like this was lame like i just get too bought in and then i get too scared and i don't like it okay. um but like anytime i'm watching a movie for the second time i'm like always trying to find like or are they pointing to what's gonna happen i know what's gonna happen like how did they how did they foreshadow this and stuff like that yeah, I think there is a difference, by the way. Like, I should clarify the spoiler thing. If I'm watching a movie, I don't want to be spoiled because all I am is the viewer of this thing. When it's a video game, I care more about how my experience playing and interacting with it is. I don't care as much about story stuff. And I like stories in games a lot. So, like, but, or, so do, you, do you feel the same if you're playing, like, Life is Strange, for example, which is, like, heavy story? I consider that more of a movie, yeah, because okay. the story is the thing that you go to that game so, for. So then you're going to change it based on how, like, weighty the story is on the game. Like, I don't, you know, I don't mm -hmm. know if that's true either, because, like, 
so let's say Mario Odyssey, for example. Okay. Uh, there's not a huge story component to that, but yeah. I still wouldn't have wanted to be spoiled about each of the kingdoms I'm going to get to see. I wanted to experience those as I got there. See, I don't care. I'll know all about that whole fucking game and still play it and be excited to get to that part that's coming up because that sounds fucking cool. Like, yeah, so. Okay. Yep. I'll take the one from Eduardo. How do you feel about multi-phase boss fights? Are they annoying? Are they a fair way to add challenge? Multi-phase boss fights. <clears throat> I think it depends. On how it's done, for sure. Yeah. It yeah. makes a lot of sense to be the last boss. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the first boss. I'm going to say I like them. I yeah. like... Yeah. They can definitely add, like, uh, literally a sense of escalation. Um, and then... Yeah. And, and often these can get like, wow, this thing is getting ridiculous. I thought, like, when they had two cannons, that was crazy. But now it's got a hundred cannons. Yeah. Like, let's go. <laughs> sure. Um... I think I prefer if they checkpoint between sections. Yeah. So, yeah, this is where this is where we start talking about how you can do this wrong. Um, Multi-phase boss fights, when you add a phase that has an insta-kill, you did it wrong, first of all. Mm. Because the first time you play that, you can't avoid it. <laughs> and if you don't sure. checkpoint at that point, you're an mm -hmm. asshole developer, just straight up. I mean, insta kills fine if it's like really slow and like easy to avoid. Sure, if you see somebody but, like charging up an obvious like nuke explosion and you need to like get out, sure. Yeah. I mean, you're still not gonna know that it is an insta kill until you get hit, so they should still <laughs> yeah. have the uh, the checkpoint system in place. But I'm fine if they have an insta kill as long as it's not like cheap. It should feel like the thing is is that. If it seems like a charge up thing, I'm going to want to get away from that boss and see what it is. That's just the yeah. way I'm going to play that. And that's totally fair because it's showing me something big is going to happen and it makes that moment feel more dramatic. If a phase, like when I hit 60% of the boss's health or whatever, if he changes phases and just does this new attack that's an instant stab in the head or something while I'm nearby, that's bullshit. And sure. there's no yep. checkpoint or something. It's like, what? What are you yep. doing? But uh, there's only been a few times I think that's ever happened in a game. And I'm trying to th remember the name of it. I think it was like Quantum Quantum, quantum something. Quantum Break. Quantum what? Break, Quantum of Solace. <laughs> yeah, it was the James Bond Quantum of Solace yeah. movie tie-in game. <laughs> I think it was whatever. I know you're a big fan. The Gears of War ripoff game that came out a long time ago oh, on like um, PS3 and Xbox. I think it's... Uh, Ooh. I forget the name of it, but Quantum I played Theory, it. Quantum Theory, maybe? Quantum Theory. I think it's... Um, oh, yeah, that's that, the one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's, like, a fight in there where it seems to be going well, and then you just start taking a shitload more damage and die. <laughs> like, it's pretty... I had problems with that game, and I remember them stemming from shit like that. Um, You know what? The only way... The only way I'm okay if they don't checkpoint it yeah. is if I know how much, like, health it has, okay. and it's, like, a third of the way through the health, and it starts to, like, transform, and it's like, okay, here we go, level two. But I was already expecting more of this fight anyway. Yeah. Then I'm okay with it. Yeah. I really like when there's a transformation thing happening, too. Like, when a boss, like, stops attacking to just be like, now I'll show you my true power, and you can yeah, keep wailing on him as he's talking. <laughs> That's great that when they do shit yep. like that. I think now that you said that, I think I realized what my least favorite is when they do something like that. Okay. When you have an unskippable cutscene and then there's an totally. insta kill that sends you back. <laughs> that's that's the well, one. That's the so worst. Not even just the insta kill. If there's if the checkpoint is right before an unskippable cutscene, then the boss. Yeah. Like it just like a thirty second like an intro thing of him like coming up the every elevator time. and in it's like and it's every time and it's like yeah. oh my god that is such a way for me to stop playing this game. So, question on this question from the chat. Do you prefer one health bar of many health bars when doing a multi-phase spice or many? I like the one health bar myself. I think the, the health bar part was more just like, if, if I have the expectation that there's more to this fight, yeah. then, it's, it, then that's fine. I don't care if it's going right. to not reset me each time because I've already been you know shown there's more to this fight. Sure. Like, I guess one of the multi-phase fights I was thinking of specifically was... 
uh, when you're fighting Gray Fox in Metal Gear Solid. And, like, between every phase where, first of all, he's just kind of, like, being sneaky and then you hit him a bunch of times. And then the next phase he, like, is short-circuiting a little bit, so his stealth isn't working as much, so he's actually, like, fighting you head-on, trying to do, like, ninja shit. And then his last phase is he's just slowly walking towards you, and if he hits you, he basically insta-kills you because, like, he's slow now, and he does this teleport to, like, punch you in the back of the head. And, like, between each one, he's just, like, talking to you as Snake. And it just stops every time, the action, for that, like, two-second cutscene, and it's a bummer if you get killed in the last part because he got a cheap shot on you because you have to go through that whole fight again and go through every fucking little dialogue thing, and it just takes away from that whole situation. So... That's kind of a bummer, but, like, that fight's okay. I always like the Dark Souls fights, myself, the Souls games fights, because that game is basic in its mechanics, and it would be boring if this thing does the same two attacks over and over that you know without adding any variance in it. And it does make the fight feel more grand when there's just, like, you're fighting another knight or something, and, like, at first it's just kind of like a back and forth of, like, dodging and swinging, and then he all of a sudden gets, like magical powers or whatever and then you're dodging like lightning bolts at the same time as his sword attacks like there's an escalation there that sounds or that feels really cool that i don't think you can get in just a standard fight so i think multi-phase boss fights are like probably way more important to me than anything <coughs> else that they could do all right uh what are some of the best epic music soundtracks in games shadow the colossus yep that's the one song I think about every time I think about it. Yeah, it's so fucking good. I think about Metal Gear Solid 3. Yep, Metal Gear Solid that's 3. Good. Yep. Yeah, that ladder boss when Snake Eater starts playing. It's That's, so that's a good. moment right there. I love yeah. that it's just accepted now that it's just it's ladder boss. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Metal Gear Solid games in general, those soundtracks are very good. Uh... I mean, Legend of Zelda, those sweeping, like, sound, or music. The music always fits, like, the area you're in in those games oh, very course. well. I hear um, Spider-Man actually has a really great soundtrack I, when you're, like, swinging around and the music starts to swell and stuff like that. Apparently yeah. they do a good job with that. Stay tuned next week's Top Down where we probably talk a lot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, before we do the next question, I just remembered um, another game I had played, kind okay. of played, that I wanted to touch on, and it was I was reminded from this boss fight question. Okay. So I really st uh, got started trying to play um, Death's Gambit last week. Okay. Sure. Okay, I'm surprised. Didn't yeah. Seem like yeah. Your kind well, of game. so I had a review code for it, so I was gonna play oh, through it and write okay. a review. Yeah, yeah. So I got to the Owl King. Yeah. yeah. So the first boss. First boss. Yep. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I I lost on the first time I tried it. So, like, okay, let's try this again. Okay. Ever since that, after that first attempt, whenever I would get, I would get in there and, like, the, you know, the door would close behind me and it would do, like, a pan over to the Owl King. Yeah. Then the screen goes black. I can still hear the audio. The game is still happening. If I press, and I'm playing on PlayStation. If I press okay. the, play, the main button, nothing changes. The screen is still black. Okay. If I switch inputs back and forth, it'll be fine. But at that point, I'm dead. So, Death's Gambit is a broken mess of a game. Yeah. So, and I'm trying to think, like, is this, is what, where, where's the issue here? And so I try it up again. Yeah. That the exact same frame, Fuck. screen goes black. So, and it's not a, like, it's not, it's not a Death's Gambit issue exactly, because okay. I can't get even back to the home menu. That won't show up. Oh, Right, like I'll press that the home menu really button, weird. and I can hear that the home menu comes up, but I can't see it still. So I try a different HDMI cable. I try a different HDMI input. Yeah, doesn't resolve the issue. So, um, and this has never happened before. So it makes me think it's an issue coming from Death's Gambit that's affecting like my the either the console or my TV in some way. Mm, like some like refresh rate incompatibility or something it's asking something, for but that it didn't happen any time before and i played through one fight with him and lost and just and every time this the second fight and it was always on this exact moment i even restarted the system again would not do it 
So I basically uh, just had to like email the developer and be like, I'm not going to be able to play this. Like stuff's starting to come out now. I don't have time. I was hoping to get it done this weekend. Yeah. And they were just like, oh, we totally understand. Thanks for letting us know. We'll let the devs know. But that's weird. I'm not going to play through Death's Gambit. <laughs> huh. That is yeah. a straight. I've heard like people having some weird problems. Like yeah. I had some issues that others didn't. So I don't know for sure what to tell you, Sean. That's but, just uh, such a weird bug because it was affecting like the whole system or my TV. I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway, back to questions. John, you want to take this one from Foxy? Yep. Foxy writes in and says, I remember getting Sonic DX and being a confused little kid loving the hell out of this weird Sonic adventure. Then I got Billy Hatcher and on the back of the booklet was an ad for Sonic Adventure 2 and little old me was confused but excited. So next time I was at GameStop, I looked for Sonic Adventure 2, but only found it for GameCube as Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. And since the whole box advertised the two-player aspect of the game, I picked something else because I didn't have friends to play with. So my question is, have you ever been so dumb that you dodged a bullet? <laughs> uh. My answer is no, that's on brand for me. <laughs> so you've always done it then? I've always been stupid. <laughs> and wow. I have always been shot numerous times. <laughs> I always dodge the bullet. I can't think of one coming to mind. This is a great story, by the way. Yeah. But I can't think of something that relates to it. I just like the follow-up question after the story. It's really good. Yep. yep. So good. Yeah, unfortunately no answer. Yeah, I mean, but, that's just kind of the whole thing about being young, right? You don't know what you don't know, so you try a bunch of stuff and you that you probably shouldn't have at some yeah, point. Yeah, why, why do we fall down to get back up? Ex that's just like Batman's dad said. Thank, thanks, Yoda. <laughs> what? Excuse yes, me, that Batman's was dad, Dumbledore? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was Gandalf, actually. That's right. Sorry, I got them Batman. mixed up. They're played by the same person. <laughs> Resterman7 writes in, if you had to choose between having infinite wisdom, running super fast, flying like Superman, or teleporting, which <laughs> one would you go for? Teleporting. Done. Flying. Really? Infinite okay. wisdom so you can do all the other things. Fuck you guys. Like invent something? Yeah, that's that's how... Like, but that would be... Right. You would need intelligence. Wisdom is just using what intelligence you have most effectively. Oh, I don't know. I think... That I, mm, I, think I think that's a stretch. Yeah, I think it's the it, it's the same thing in this case. In this That's case, I would still teleport because fuck traveling. I hate traveling. In this case, I would take it as the knowledge to be able to make the other things. And if it doesn't mean that, then teleporting. I think his question literally says the stipulations too, and I think he says that if in that if in that case, wisdom. But if not teleporting, so I think you said exactly what he said in the full question, which is great. Mm. Um, I'm sticking with flying. I'd love, that'd be awesome. Who would choose running super fast? Is there know. that person? Because if you could teleport, you could just keep teleporting ahead as far as you could see to make it look like you ran super fast. That's what he says in his. That's literally what he says. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's true. <laughs> like, uh. Final Insanity wrote in and said, why is there a general stigma associated with playing games on any difficulty belong below normal or whatever game specific equivalent? I'm sure I'm not alone in seeing people say blank game is too hard only to find they played it on standard difficulty when there were easier difficulty options available to them. At what point can you say a game is too hard on standard difficulty? At what point is it just a matter of people being too stubborn to admit they're not very good at the game? I think it's a good question. Yeah, that's a really good question. There's a lot of stuff packed in here. <laughs> so, yeah, my my takeaway is the reason people don't like going to other difficulties is because standard difficulty is usually what the developer intends for the optimal experience of the game to be. It should be anyway. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. Right. Uh, Gears of War did something I always hated where it to it actually made hard difficulty. No, that's a uh, Halo. Hello. No, Gears did the same thing. Did Ge Are you sure? Yes. Pretty sure. Okay. Gears would always be like a hardcore is like this is act that the way Gears was intended to be played would always be the description. I think you're that's I'm pretty no. sure that's exactly what no. Halo says. So I am hundred percent. I'm I'm hundred percent sure that is Gears of War. <laughs> All right. It All might right. be both. It wouldn't be surprised if it was both, but I know Gears does definitely this Halo for sure. But anyway. 
Maybe it's both. Maybe Microsoft told them they have to do this. Um, yeah, I think that's where the, the stigma comes from is because if you're not playing normal, then you're, you know, you're abnormal. Something something is, is off yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think it just comes into like elitist bullshit of like, oh, you're playing on easy. Are you a baby gamer? You're playing games for babies, are you? There is that for sure. That's where the stigma actually comes from for sure. Um, okay. So that's where the stigma comes from. What else is in here? At what point can you say a game is too hard on standard difficulty? Uh, that's completely subjective to the person playing it. Yeah. I feel like if you're not having fun because you can't get past a section due to its difficulty, it's too hard. that is when it is too hard on the difficulty you're playing it at. Yeah. I think that's the, that's the case. Like, I mean, if you want to go through a game on a certain difficulty and you want to beat on that one, that's that's fine for you. You, you know, you can do that. And that's, they have that option for you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's going to be tons of reasons why you should bring it down. Uh, I, I for myself, for example, uh, I broke my wrist a couple months ago. <laughs> I couldn't play some games on normal difficulty because I couldn't move my thumb enough. I needed the enemies to be worse or I just could not play that game. Sure. Yeah. So at what point I say a game is too hard on standard difficulty? Uh, cheap things that the game does. I don't like when games have unfair deaths. I don't like insta deaths in any regard unless it's like an obvious you fall into a pit and can't get out or spikes or something like that. Um, I, I like when a game's difficulty forces me to use the mechanics properly and it feels like it's on me. I don't like when there's just like a cheap shot to make it seem more difficult or when there's just like you're playing a shooter and everything, every guy you're shooting can take like three full clips and you have two. So you have to find like another one somewhere in the level to beat this like one standard dude. I don't like bullet sponges in games, stuff like that. So yeah, I guess it's just when tedium is the word. A game is too hard for me when it's tedious and I don't care anymore. Like I lose that enjoyment that Sean was talking about. Yeah, and I, and I think like another thing is like sometimes I'll put a game that I don't care about too much on easy because I just kind of want to get through it. Like I just kind of mm. want to experience the game a bit. I'm 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 not like like what do I get for beating it on normal? I, I guess I get an, an extra twenty achievement points. Yeah, but, I mean at some point who cares about that? Uh, so it, it it's great to have multiple difficulties because then you can play it how you want. You can yeah. have it as hard as you want, as easy as you want, and by the end of the day. This is a game. This should be fun for me. You know, if, yeah. if you're wanting to, if you're trying to have fun, you know, if that's, if that's your goal. If you're looking for like a super hard thing, then, you know, you, you can find that somewhere else too. Sure. Yeah. All right. That's it for questions. If you want to send in questions, it is top down perspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter, the Facebook group, the discord channel and John's PO box. Games of the week. The Messenger. Uh, by Vysic Four Souls on Tabletop Simulator. Uh, and I'm going to give it to Thumper. Nice. Uh, all right. Right after this, uh, we're going to go live with our TDP Plus episode of Runner 3. So if you're uh, an $8 backer up, you can watch that live or you can watch the archive later. Otherwise, you will get the audio version Um sometime next week after this one gets put up probably most likely on monday and one thing to look out for is once again patreon screwed up its billing system so a bunch of people got declined that probably weren't supposed to so go check your billing stuff and make sure it's right or maybe like resubmit it or whatever uh because i know a lot of you this time definitely got dropped uh and that'll do it we'll see you guys next week bye, bye everybody <laughs>